Have you ever had a vacation that you're excited about, but you're also a little bit anxious because you know that you're going to be pushed outside of your comfort zone? That's what blackwater diving was for me. But first, let's go back to the start of the trip. As most trips to Hawaii do, unless you're a good swimmer, it started at the airport. The flight was about 6 hours and 15 minutes. We made it in time to see the sunset. But the night is where the action really happened on this trip. Every night, boats and divers gather off the coast of Kona to see the manta ray show. The divers create a campfire of light, which attracts plankton, which is the food source for the manta. There are about 250 mantas that have been named off the Kona coastline, with the largest ray on record, Big Bertha, having a 14-foot wingspan. These mantas eat about 3 to 8% of their body weight in plankton per day. We had about 7 mantas join us on the first night, and about 14 on the second, and it was amazing. With the increasing popularity of this dive, the conservation and protection of manta rays has become a priority for dive operators and other organizations. Manta rays in other parts of the Pacific Ocean have been hunted by fishermen as a result of the increasing demand for manta ray gill plates. They're being used mainly in traditional Chinese medicine to produce remedies for various diseases, such as chickenpox and cancer. However, there's no scientific evidence relating to the effectiveness of these remedies. And as recently as January of 2016, China was weighing a ban on manta ray gills. Whoa. Okay, let's go back above water. We are going to visit Laura's coffee farm. And that was the sound of our rental car bottoming out on a back road. probably can't hear me because the chickens are all squawking. They're loud. The chickens are loud. Yeah. Talk about loud. How about at 3 in the morning when the roosters decide that they want to crow? Hi, the sheepies. about two weeks old. Okay. Come on, mama. Squeeze it into your mouth and just taste it. It's got sugar in it. So taste the bean? Yeah. Yeah. Do I chew it or just taste it? it? Just taste it. Mm. It has a little caffeine. Coffee mm. pickers used to chew on them mm -hmm. and get a little caffeine and get a little bite. Mm. Back underwater, we did a few dives during the day also. For me especially, being weightless underwater is a great feeling. Yeah.
in lots And I will hold you Because the male seahorse carries the babies There's male seahorses that are pregnant most of their lives Nope Not doing that We went to visit the seahorse farm the seahorse is facing extinction from overfishing for the pet and medicine trade and habitat destruction from global warming and development. The seahorse farm is doing their part to save them from extinction by producing them on the farm and offering them to marine aquarium hobbyists and public aquariums around the world as an eco-friendly alternative to catching them in the wild. What is the seahorse captain? What is seahorse seashell party? Who didn't invite me? Why didn't I get invited? If you've never seen that video, you're missing out. But let's keep going. Okay, we're going diving? Manta rays? We're going diving! What are we doing after manta rays? Black water! It's Luke's first black water. So this brings us back to the beginning. Black water diving. So we're gonna go three miles offshore. This is our dive master, Flipper. He's awesome. And three miles offshore, the depth of the water is about 8,500 feet. When we get out there, we're gonna drop one of the drop lines. When we drop it, we wanna make sure that it's completely vertical. Uh, if it's vertical, we'll jump in and have Matt Crazy also pick it up. If it's not vertical, if it is at an angle, if it looks like an angle that has a lot of current to it, we will drop the sea anchor, and the boat will get caught by it, and we'll be going the same speed as the current. So, say everything's perfect. We get out there, we'll drop the drop lines, and when you get in the water, as soon as you get in, you want to start descending. So, deflate, start to go down, look at your gauge. Um, when you're looking at your gauge, stop at 30 feet. So once you get to 30 feet, you get your buoyancy all straightened out, you're looking up, you're looking around, you're checking stuff out, you realize that you're in a good spot, take your light and slowly go through that darkness. As you go through that darkness and you're using that light going slowly, you're going to start picking up all that crazy little stuff that you see on all the nature shows and stuff like that. You see on the pictures and, and you see everywhere. Uh, the best way to describe this stuff is that it's all the fun and excitement and joy of the Haight-Ashbury region of San Francisco without the hangover in the morning. All right? I'd been listening to Gail talk about this dive for four years. It was time to see for myself what it was all about. <laughs> What you see here represents the world's largest migration. These animals are coming up near the surface, all the way from 3,000 to 4,000 feet, and it happens every night. During these dives, they've photographed and collected species that have never been seen before. There's a maximum of six divers on this dive, each attached to their own 60-foot tether, which is attached to the boat. This helps make sure that anybody who leaves the boat comes back to the boat. That was your first black water experience. What do you think? That was awesome. Yeah? Yeah? That was yeah? Awesome. yeah, wait, yeah. wait. I didn't see any sharks. <laughs> no, I didn't think you would. I was looking. <laughs>
He'd be <laughs> one lucky SOB if you found some. Uh, Wait, well, how was that dive? That was awesome. Yeah, I liked it. What did you see out there? Oh, I saw some fluorescent stuff. Yeah. Some of the pulsating, like, I don't know what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Welcome cool. to my world. Okay, let's get back onto land. We booked a trip on the Hilo side of the island on a lava boat tour where you can see lava going straight into the ocean. The scenery on this road was pretty incredible, but Gail was a little bit anxious about the lava boat tour. And Gail was on the phone with the lava boat tour making sure it was safe. But it's no problem jumping in the middle of the ocean at 11.30 at night. Oh, black when, water. When they, talk, when they talk about emergency exits, because of predatory animals like sharks. And they go over the signals like this that mean get the hell out of the water fast. But the lava boat tour. <laughs> so it turns out we did get pretty close. Close to make both of us a little bit anxious. They said the water below the boat was about 110 degrees, and you could feel the heat on your face. Some friends we met on the island just happened to be mountain biking that same day and got this footage of our boat. Later that day, we drove to Volcano National Park to see the lava at night. And that's it. We left on a plane in the morning from a vacation that was, for me, equal parts relaxing to equal parts pushing my personal boundaries and comfort levels. Something that I want to keep doing, because this is it. We've only got this one life to live. I want to make the most of it. <laughs>